Coronavirus fears continue to take a toll on the market, but what else is bothering Wall Street? Now, I got to say, I think one of the things is individual investors bending but not breaking is driving Wall Street crazy. Bullish sentiment, folks, rocketed in the past week to almost 39% from just 30%. Now, here's the rub. Bearish percentage remained unchanged at 39%. So are individual investors too bullish? I want to bring in ER, ER Shares uh, CEO and CIO Joel Shulman, trading with Cody.com editor Cody Willard and Point View Wealth Management's David Dietz. David, you were shaking your head, yes. Are you one of these Wall Street elitists that thinks that until Main Street buckles down and sells everything, the market's vulnerable? Well, historically, we have seen a correlation between pessimism and better markets. And when there's ebulence, markets go sideways. So I'm seeing among my client base is about five to one. Everyone's panicky, but f five for every six want to get more money into the market. So, and only one wants to take money out. Really? I mean, and that's changed, obviously, over the last two, one or two decades. I mean, this would not have been the case 20 years ago. Go. But isn't that the point, right? And Joe, isn't that the point? People have yeah. watched. And imagine if you sold everything in March of 2009. Yeah. Yeah. The S&P's up 340% since then. And you're right. like, golly, you're still waiting for the next leg down because we someone on TV said, wait till commercial <laughs> paper gets hit. <laughs> well, we've had a couple of situations. 1987, of course, uh, we've had the crash there in 89, another one, smaller one, and then 2008. But when we go back over the last 50 years, there are 13 days, 13 days, where we've had 3% swings plus and minus in the same week. Eight of the, nine of those were in 2008. We had one in 2015, one in 2011, one in 1987. So this is uh, unusual, but before those five times, for those five years, we had plus markets for the year. All right, Cody, I, I came to you third on this because I got an email this morning uh, from someone who reads my work. He's not a subscriber, but he reads my daily commentary. And I thought of you. He said, if I had any cash, I'd be buying technology stocks today. I'm getting a salary bonus on March 13th, about 7500 after taxes, and we'll be buying with all of it. You're my tech expert. Is this person too bullish in your mind or maybe making a buy of a lifetime? I think we gotta, you got to differentiate between buying a great company that you believe in for the long term and betting on the markets. And so if he truly has found two or three, five, ten companies that he loves, technology, I try to find the most revolutionary companies in the world that are going to change not just their industry, but change how we live. Google, Apple, try to go down the list. Tesla is one of my favorites one these days. You and I have talked about that every time I've been on for the last year. That is the kind of thing. You've, if I hold Tesla here, but I'm not trying to buy the S&P 500. Confession, we, we asked our traders to buy Tesla Friday, and we took profits on it yesterday, I think. So 13%, 12%, and 48 hours. Not a bad deal. You have convinced me longer term, when I think the price is settled, I'll buy it in a longer term account. Joe, you want to so, comment on uh, that? Yes, uh, to, to, the, to the earlier point, that I absolutely agree. I mean, technology was leading 2020, and it's going to continue to lead when we come back. It's U.S. large cap tech. Our U.S. large cap tech, we've got 14 of them, uh, averaged over 19%, you know, year to day up until a week or two ago. So I completely agree. Large for your uh, for your uh, letter writer who said to, uh, in in um, March to, uh, March 13th he's going to have his cash. Right. I completely agree. Uh, U.S. large cap tech, particularly entrepreneurial companies, is going to be a good place to be. All right now. For, so for our clients, though, we don't want to have a concentrated bet. When you now have the S&P 500 yield more than 1% over the 10-year Treasury, you can have a diversified portfolio, take less risk, so and not worry about hypervaluation. So is that why, David, is, is that why this week uh, with this rebound attempt that's been led by the defensive stocks with high, high dividends, utilities killing it this week, real estate uh, killing it this week, consumer staples, I know some of that is the rush to buy Clorox and Campbell's soup, but, you know, these are high dividend sectors. I mean, and... It's not, it's, it's not really defensive anymore, is it? If you have a, a yield that's three times the, the tenure. Absolutely. They're looking for the bond surrogates with these recurring revenues as far as the eye can foresee and comparing that to the minuscule bond yields and saying, this is a no-brainer. That's why they're going in those sectors. Guys, it's a tough argument, though, to make that you're simply looking at the relative value of the bonds versus the stocks right, right here because the capital losses on either one could be tremendous right. in and, the and next six And to your months. point, anyone who bought Chevron at the beginning of the year for the dividend uh, is going to 
have to hold that yeah. stock for the next 20 years unless it comes back uh, because yeah. it's down almost 30 percent. Hey, I want to pull up uh, the, the, a couple things because I feel like we're in a price discovery place here. Monday and Friday's lows, guys. And the reason I want to share this with the, with the audience is uh, we've been making a, a sort of start, kind of bouncing back a little bit. Uh, you know, the last few sessions is price discovery. Uh, and, and we haven't we haven't breached those lows yet, either for Monday or from Friday. But I fear they are breached and we start to set up a whole nother set. That's when those parameters. retail investors finally panic in that number that you just showed at the so top. So Friday's low. If that doesn't hold, that's when we get the that, that's they, when Wall Street will share because, the, because the average wall, in, individual investor will chuck in the towel. No, yeah. I, I, well, I, I think there are a number of investors on the sidelines sitting on cash. I think institutional investors sitting on cash. And I see them coming back into the markets. I think we're already seeing China come back to almost full strength. And I think once people start to see that, you know, the epicenter of this plague is starting to come back, um, the rest of the money is going to follow in our markets. And I think it's a one or two quarter hit. And I think, you know. But the markets will maybe move before that. I think they will move before okay. that. Yeah, I absolutely agree okay. they're going to move so, before that. So a key thing I think people have to realize that there's been kind of the supply, supply suspension. There's been no supply destruction. This is not like Fukushima in Japan where a whole swaths of uh, manufacturing output are destroyed. Right now, there's a little bit of fear, but that can go away in very, very quickly. In that sense, it's like a 9-11. Right. Charles, I, the, the biggest problem in my mind is that there are companies, both large and small businesses around this country and around the world, that don't have enough cash in the bank and have too much debt, and there will be some bankruptcies and some pain because they're not going to be able to so, pay their so bills. So make sure these companies that you are buying have a fortress-like balance sheet. Amen. That's the moral of the story. Thank you all very, very much, Joel, Cody, and David.